Hi there. My name is Adam Grant, and for the last three years, I've worked for Via Rail Canada. I worked as a locomotive attendant at the Vancouver Maintenance Centre from May the 1st, 2015, all the way till June the 12th, 2018. During this time, I was proactive, never had any sick days, took on as much overtime as I could possibly get, and was always willing to go above and beyond expectations. In this video, I'm going to expose and present four investigations which I was involved in which resulted in my termination. My evidence will clear my name. The purpose of this video is to also help others who might find themselves entangled in a web where management and certain employees covertly go about their ways to get innocent people demerits, investigations, and terminated, like my case. This video will expose safety concerns, harassment, breach of the code of ethics, bully tactics, and again, corporate and union corruption. So welcome to part one of my story, and thank you for your patience in joining me today. The first investigation that I'm going to share with you, I received a call to investigation on exactly March 27, 2018 from the manager and investigating officer at the Vancouver Maintenance Center, Mr. Sean Terry. Now, when he presented me with my call to investigation, he asked me if I wished to have a duly authorized union representative to represent me in the investigation. Now, in this situation, I responded no, because our local chair, Mr. Herkelurgis and fellow uh, locomotive attendant, uh, happened to be training two new employees, which was the reason for this investigation. What happened was, is that on March the 15th, a pull-apart uh, occurred uh, with uh, Mr. Herkelurgis and the two new trainees, Parm and Gagan. Parm and Gagan had come from CP and CN, and funny enough, we were told by actually the investigating officer and manager, Sean Terry, that they were qualified to be able to do moves because they came from CP and CN and their cards were good. I would later find out from a head trainer from headquarters, Mr. Jean Lejoie, that their cards actually were expired and that they were not qualified to be able to do movement. Now, on March the 15th, what occurred was Gagan was driving the unit, Parm was uh, the ground man and in control. There was electrical cables still connected. Parm had pulled the, uh, uh, the, uh, the angle cock to release the couplers and requested the driver, Gagan, to move ahead. What happened was, is since the electrical cables were still connected, a pull apart happened, resulting in damaging the, the, uh, the car and also the engine. Now, Again, I was found at no fault in regards to this investigation, and I thought it was at an end. One thing I wish to mention here is that at my whole time I'd been now here at Via Rail, the Vancouver Maintenance Center, about two years and ten months at this time, that I had a clear record. Again, no sick days, always taking over time, always going above and beyond. Now, March 27th, Again, remember this date because it's going to correlate with the rest of these investigations that I'm going to mention. Also, March the 15th, which was the day of the pull-apart. Now, on the day of this pull-apart, Mr. Bradley Smith was the acting foreman. And you're going to see his name involved in these investigations afterwards. And I'm going to show you how these weasels have put together this and, 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 and set me up. And I have all my audio proof. I have... I even have them on, on audio. You're going to see. Just uh, be patient with me here for a second here. So anyways, when this investigation was finished, I reported to the investigating officer and manager, Mr. Sean Terry, that a fellow employee, Mr. Dave Desagne, locomotive attendant as well, had reported to me that he'd been being harassed by Mr. Herkelurgis. Okay? Now, in the Code of Ethics, it states that we have a responsibility to report to a senior officer 
that there is some kind of harassment issue. It's written in the Code of Ethics, and so all I did was report it. Now, the other thing I wish to mention at this time is that when the investigation finished, I turned on my radio, and what do I hear? Another unqualified locomotive attendant, Mr. Johnny Huynh, doing movement with Mr. Herc Kalurgis. Now, the foreman had got them to do movement since I was in an investigation and I couldn't be doing my job. So what did he do? They got an unqualified locomotive attendant, Johnny Huynh, to be doing movement. Now, we had just finished, literally that moment, an investigation regarding two other unqualified locomotive attendants that we were told were qualified, who weren't uh, qualified, and, and now we have a third guy. So I immediately asked Mr. Sean Terry, the manager and investigating officer, is Johnny Huynh a qualified locomotive attendant? And he looked me straight in the eyes and he says, I don't know. I then turned my radio to channel 2 so that I wouldn't interrupt their transmission for fear of any kind of safety. And I immediately requested to speak with a via controller foreman, to which there was no response, dead air. I then again request over the radio, via controller, this is L.A. Grant, nothing but dead air. A third time I ask, finally I get a response and it's via controller, acting foreman, Mr. Adam LaChapelle. I then ask him, I say, can you please confirm to me that Johnny Huynh is a qualified locomotive attendant? To which he responded, uh, 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 yeah? I then asked again, can you please confirm that he is a qualified locomotive attendant? Uh, 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 hold on. Nothing but radio silence after this. I looked at Sean. I said, I'll be right back. I then walked down the hallway to where the trainer who was visiting from, or another trainer uh, who was visiting from Montreal headquarters, happens to be a friend of mine, Mr. Jean Lachois. He actually trained me as a locomotive attendant. I approached Jean, I asked him kindly, I said, can you please tell me if Mr. Johnny Huynh is a qualified locomotive attendant? Jean Lajoie immediately responded, absolutely not. I then grabbed my gear and I made my way down into the shop. And what did I see? I come to the engine and I see the acting foreman via controller reaming out Johnny Huynh, the unqualified locomotive attendant, in front of myself, other employees, and Mr. Herc Kalurgis, completely belittling him and disrespecting him in the shop. Now, Johnny had gotten the opportunity to become, to go through the training and was going through the training as a locomotive attendant. He moved from uh, the baggage side. So he, didn't, he doesn't know the operation. He doesn't know anything. If somebody asks him to do something, he just thinks he has to do it. Now, here we have a manager and foreman that don't know if their own employees are qualified or unqualified to do movement and, and are doing so. Huh, seems a little bit uh, iffy to me. And at the same time, a very, especially with a, with a, with a highly safety sensitive position. Now here's the thing. I immediately afterwards filled out a hazard ID. Now, on this hazard ID, which this is the original document, reported by Adam Grant on March the 28th, unsafe act, unsafe equipment, unsafe condition, unsafe use of equipment, and the description, it says here, unqualified locomotive attendant Johnny Huynh was put in control of movement by a foreman. What was the potential consequence? An accident. Recommendations to prevent recurrence? Do not allow unqualified locomotive attendants to operate equipment. Corrective action taken. Pending an investigating, or sorry, pending an incident report to be done and investigation. Now, Adam LaChapelle, the acting foreman at the time, would afterwards be investigated for having Johnny Huynh do movement, to which this did not help my case at all, and you're going to see throughout all these investigations how management then decided to start setting me up, all for trying to keep the place safe. Now, I want to also share with you guys another hazard ID, unsafe act, unsafe condition. This was reported on April the 2nd, and it states, none of the locomotive attendants have been trained properly to use the overhead crane. 
We have never been trained and are required to do so if we need to use the overhead crane. What was the potential consequence? Someone can get injured or equipment damaged. Corrective action taken. Please get us all trained so that we can complete given tasks that require the overhead crane. Now the reason why I reported this is because again, it had been two years and ten months that I've been with the company since then. And during all of this time, we are constantly being asked to use the overhead crane to sand, to put sand in uh, the uh, West Coast units. Now again, I would tell the other locomotive attendants, do not use that overhead crane. You are not qualified to do so. And the thing is, is if that if an accident does happen and you're going to be investigated, what are they gonna what are they gonna ask you? Are you were you qualified to do such a thing? And you're gonna say no. But here's the thing, you're stuck between a hard rock and a and a hard place because if you didn't do what management told you, they'd come after your ass. And I'm going to show you exactly how they came after my ass with all of these investigations that transpired after, again, this investigation for wanting to keep the place safe. And again, March the 27th was the day that I requested no union representative, Mr. Herc Kalurgis, due to a conflict of interest on March the 27th to Mr. Sean Terry. And you're going to see now in my next investigation how this all correlates together. Yeah, well, I spoke with Ron Shore about all this kind of stuff, too, in regards to getting our executive kind of everything. He just got reelected, right? And uh, as our, uh, I guess, a regional rep, right? But, uh, yeah, like, so you look at even just the crane operation for the last three years, and it was funny. Then they, uh, I come up here to get qualified as a crane operator, and we have to go switch. So they put this course together. There's eight people in here. Me and her can't even stay to even finish that. So for the whole time I've been here, I've been actually using that crane line. Like, uh, legally, I mean, hey, I know how to use it. It's the big, uh, you know, the huge one that they move the trucks with and all this kinds of stuff. I mean, that's just one example, right? But I mean, it's funny because it's like, and then when I do say, hey, uh, you know, I asked the guy that runs the course, I said, hey, is this, uh, you know, are they allowed to do this? So I told the uh, other LAs, listen, you're not allowed to use it. Because if something happens and you're sitting on the other end of a typewriter, one of the questions they're going to ask you, were you qualified to do so? And you're going to say no. And then what's going to happen? They're going to say, well, why were you using it? And cover up their ass. So it's kind of like, hey. And then when you kind of put this in, it's like, oh, they don't want to hear that. Because they want to, here they want to just get away with whatever they can get away with. Yeah. Yeah. The management circle here. Right. April 11th now, 2018. I received my second call to investigation. And it states, Dear Mr. Adam Grant, This is to advise you that you are hereby notified to attend an investigation to determine the facts and circumstances surrounding a violation of the Code of Ethics and violation of the Workplace Violence and Harassment Prevention Policy. The investigation is scheduled to take place on April the 13th, 2018 at 12 o'clock in the boardroom at the Vancouver Maintenance Center. Regards, Sean Terry. He's the manager of the Vancouver Maintenance Center. He's the investigating officer of the first investigation. And he will also be the investigator for this investigation. Now, on April the 11th, he hands me two exhibits. One is a letter written from Mr. Herc Kalurgis on March 27, 2018 to Sean Terry. Here's where this date gets important. The second exhibit that I received was a uh, copy of the Code of Ethics from uh, Via Rail Canada. Okay. So I immediately read, read the, uh, the letter uh, from Mr. Herc Kalurgis addressed to Sean Terry. And it states here, Dear Sean, as discussed in the office in the presence of Foreman Alan Koch, the following are the behavioral train of events regarding locomotive attendant Mr. Adam Grant. 
During the week of March 12, 2018, RTC Preet Singh approached me to inform me as the union representative for agreement number one that Mr. Grant had made disparaging racial comments against RTC apprentice Kai. Preet went on to say that Mr. Grant referred to Kai as Kamikaze Kai. Preet had taken offense to Mr. Grant's comments and considered his comments to be racial slurs and debated either to confront Mr. Grant or talk about racial motivated comments and mutual respect among employees in the workplace. We decided the latter was the best direction to take and agreed that Preet would speak on the topic at the 6 a.m. meeting without mentioning Mr. Grant's name in the hopes it would be enough to resolve the issue and prevent it from happening again. As you will recall, Preet did speak to the issue on Wednesday, March 21, 2018. Mr. Grant, who was present, came forward and said you were probably referring to me. Mr. Grant took full responsibility and apologized in front of the entire group. Mr. Grant then turned to me after everyone was given their job assignments and said he shouldn't have referred to Muhammad Khan as Akbu Akbar. He didn't even realize it was about Khan until Preet told him directly. On Wednesday, March 14, 2018, Mr. Grant made a racially disparaging comment to me by saying I should go stand by my two sons, referring to newly hired L.A. trainees Parm and Gagan. All three of us are of ethnic coloring. I responded saying that that was a racial comment. There was no response from Mr. Grant at that point. Then on Thursday, March 15, 2018, prior to the 6 a.m. meeting, I was standing with Parm and Gagan, and Mr. Grant made yet another disparaging comment towards all three of us. He referred to us as Curly, Larry, and Moe, and laughed. As you know, Mr. Grant was insinuating we were the Three Stooges. Then on Friday, March 23, 2018, I was sitting in the lunchroom with my switching partner, Dave Desaigne, L.A. trainees Johnny, Parm, and Gagan. All of a sudden, Mr. Grant walks in and makes yet another disparaging remark towards me in front of all of my colleagues. He says I have a low IQ and starts laughing. I ignored the comment, and he went on to say the comment for a second time. At this point, I responded by saying there's a million comedians out of work, and you're trying to be one, and walked out. I was disgusted and ashamed to be working with someone that tried to demean me in that manner. In my almost 37 years working for Canadian National and Via Rail, no one has ever spoken to me like that. This kind of behavior has no place in the workplace. I would like to note that the last, that these last comments were made after Preet's talk on Wednesday, March 21st, 2018, and demonstrate his understanding of his behavior is zero and his public apology carries no weight. I feel it necessary to formally complain in writing. I would also like to note when the day shift swiped out this last Monday, March 26, I heard Mr. Grant blurt out Kamikaze Kai once again. In closing, I certainly hope this complaint is dealt with in an appropriate manner, a written apology given to all involved, and assurance that this type of behavior will not occur again. Thank you sincerely. Herc Kalurgis, locomotive attendant, 703-060 is his employee number, addressed to Steve Sylvester, the senior manager. Now here's where it gets interesting. March 28th is when I reported to my senior officer in regards to Dave Desanya being harassed by Mr. Herc Kalurgis. April the 11th now, I'm now given this exhibit. The other thing I wish to mention is he insinuates me being racist on March 14th and March 15th. Now in regards to my first investigation, March 14th is the day before the pull apart happened regarding my first investigation, and March the 15th Again, uh, uh, insinuating me being racist on March 15th, the day the pull apart happened. See how these are all correlating dates here? Now, once I received this, I immediately knew the seriousness of this document. So, what did I do? I immediately created a character reference letter. And it states at the very top here, I consider Adam Grant, in brackets, locomotive attendant, a positive influence and a man of good character. He has never made any degrading remarks or any racial comments in my presence. His behavior at work has always been professional. There's the name, the signature, the date, and the employee number. Now here's the thing. Regarding Mr. Herc Kalurgis's letter, not one single person mentioned in his letter ever once went to management and never also never went to uh, Mr. Herc Kalurgis to complain or ask to be put in a letter. Okay, No one has ever made any uh, 
complaints about myself since being with the company. So, in fact, the, the interesting thing also, uh, so I got over 50 signatures here from all walks of life, gay, black, Spanish, East Indian, Canadian, gay, you name it. Like, I'm friends with all sorts of people. Now, the other thing in regards to Mr. Herkulurgis' letter, Mohammed Khan was mentioned in his letter. He signed my character letter reference. Kai was mentioned in Mr. Herkulurgis' letter. He signed my character letter reference. Johnny Huynh was mentioned in Herkulurgis' letter. He signed my document as well. Also, Gagin was mentioned in Herkulurgis' letter. He also signed. And Parm Takar was also mentioned in Herkulurgis' letter. And he also signed my letter. The only person that did not sign my letter was Mr. Dave Desanye. For fear of reprisal, Dave told me that he was scared that if Herc Kuller just somehow found out that his name was involved on my character letter reference, that something bad was going to happen. And I'm going to prove all this because I have audio clips with Dave Desaunier. I have audio clips with Foreman. You're going to see throughout all these investigations that I have more than enough proof to clear my name. So I had this on, on April the 12th. Now guess what? Why would management be upset that I have character letter references. They did not want me to do this. I also started to keep a log book to which I have signatures of Foreman. You're going to see it all. Now, I have Kai. He also wrote me a nice, beautiful letter on April the 11th, 2018. Sorry, 2018, and it says here, in regards to Mr. Adam Grant's character, he has been nothing but kind to me since I joined the team with Via Rail. He has always been friendly to myself and others. As I have observed, Adam always greets me with a smile and asks how my day is going and is always going out of his way to keep morale up out on the floor. The other letter that I have here is from another employee. He wrote me up a beautiful letter and it says to whom it may con concern. My name is Christopher Flaherty and I am a diesel engine mechanic at the VMC and co-workers with locomotive attendant Adam Grant. I met Adam when I started working at the VMC and I've had the pleasure of working alongside Adam for almost two years. Since day one, Adam has always been a great co-worker. When working together, he communicates well, acts professionally, does his job effectively and in a safe manner. I find Adam to be self-motivated. When he is not moving equipment around, you will find him cleaning the shop, helping out his co-workers, or taking on small projects to help improve the shop floor or make it safer. He is always willing to lend a hand to whoever needs it. Conversations with him are funny, entertaining and kept appropriate for work. He has a positive attitude and will go out of his way to cheer up a fellow co-worker when he or she is feeling down or having a bad day. In conclusion, Adam is a hard-working individual with a great work ethic. I look forward to working with him for many more years to come. Sincerely, Christopher Flaherty. Okay, so these are from all people that I work with on a regular basis. Afternoon shift, morning shift, like all shifts. I have never had this happen to me ever. Now, the other thing that I wish to present to you is, look, on the day of March 26, he refers to this date, Mr. Herkulurgis, that he heard me blurt out Kamikaze Kai once again. I actually spent the day on March 26 consoling Mr. Herkulurgis. He had shared with me intimate details in regards to his wife's illness, also some of his family situation. Right here, I have proof from Mr. Herkulurgis and look, you will see, Monday, March 26, at exactly 2.58 p.m., just and it's myself sending this to him, just want to send good vibes to you and your family, man. One day at a time, take care. And he wrote back to me at exactly on March 26, at 3.07 p.m., thanks, Adam, have a good afternoon. So, how do we go from here to here? The only thing that comes to my mind is because... This first investigation where I brought up valid safety concerns and that also possibly I might have hurt his feelings by not having him represent me as a local chair. But I only thought that I didn't want to have him there was because of a conflict of interest because he was also involved in the pull apart. So here you have it. Now a very serious letter. So the other thing I'm going to play for you now is a audio clip for a conversation between Dave Desaunier and myself 
on exactly Saturday, April the 14th. like a positive place yeah. you know and sometimes uh, it's hard to understand what's going on with it it's yeah. not even there it's like why are you writing a letter on vacation time and then you create all that mess and not even there and mm -hmm. you got to deal with this it's like okay but can you defend your point like can you be here at least you know it's like when we go to Cancun and write a letter about her we'll probably be like fuck mm -hmm. I didn't do it when you're here <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's uh, it's, you know, yeah. That's the shit. Like, we would give up. We would give some slack to Luca and people. Who are, like, obviously, like super lazy and like almost retarded. And like Luca, it's like fuck man. Look at the guy who was just walking around the shop, and I was like, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> and he would like him, right? What is you? Look at the dreams. To, uh, to you guys, uh, they're retarded too. It's like, oh yeah. And he's like, buddy, buddy with them right away. It's like, what's up all year? Like, what's what's wrong? What's why you wouldn't, you wouldn't be any better than those guys? Right? Right. Yeah, I don't know. You come here, you do your job, like uh, in the yard, like you go get the switch super fast, and jumping in and out of the cars, you're doing your work, like really great. What's wrong? I don't know. Really, right? It's just, I think it's just another person that just doesn't like you. That's it. Mm. But it doesn't work that way. Like, this is like a job. You just kind of just say, I don't like somebody. Well, and then to create like false allegations yeah. like that. Uh, it's the worst, you can think. So. Yeah. And that's something like uh, I consider very serious. Yeah. Especially because it's a defamation of character. Yep. And not only that, Dave, but it's a threat. So it's, to, uh, it's a threat to my 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 reputation here, yep. and it's a threat to my job. Yeah, I know. It's like really like how can it be worse than that? You know, it's and like, and 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 you said that he was trying like when you phoned him about the letter, you said that. Yeah, I just wanted to know why. Like, he's and you said that he's backed me up into a corner. Yeah, he was saying, "Oh, he's, I put this letter. He's got no way out." That's the word he was using. That I that I've got no way out. Yeah. What this letter? What does that mean? I, I don't know what it means. I, I think I think it means maybe it's like oh, okay, he's gonna put you in trouble. That's what he wants, right? And he cannot escape it. It's like what the fuck? It's so weird. And then basically, I talk about I talk about it for like five minutes, and I'm just like, okay, like I can just it's okay. I have a good vacation. I didn't know what to say. It was kind of like terrible. Was like, you know? Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. Like, damn, it's getting a. Yeah, like, is he like losing it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, some people are getting older. Yeah. It's kind of like disturbing. Yeah. Well, especially since I sent him that nice text message, basically. Yeah, he was like telling, telling you and thanks, Adam. Yeah, I wished him and his family well. Like, we had a heart-to-heart -heart, uh, on the 26th. I gave him a big hug in the lunchroom. You know, we both got really teary-eyed because it's like, hey, man, like... Yeah, no, don't get it. We're all it's human beings here, right? Like, yeah. you know, when people are going through things, it's like, I want to be there for them, right? Yeah. But, uh... It's just like, it's almost like shocking to see, like, okay, what's he did? Yeah. That's why I wanted to know, okay, like, is he all there? Or like, is he just, like, using it? Yeah, like, what's wrong with that kid? Yeah. It's just strange. Yeah, it's pretty it's strange. strange. Yeah. Because I know it's lazy. I know he's always been repeating the same old stories. But now I got to a point, it's like, okay, you now he's making like statements to another unionized, like about, about you, who are part of the unionized, what do you do? 
it's just going against you. Like, why, why go after like a co-worker like this? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I guess. Uh, it's really bad. Yeah. I think you're doing really good. There's lots of people that have been like scared of just like do nothing and just accept it. It's like, oh, okay, like, you know. What do you mean, like cower? Like? Yeah, exactly. They will just like, you know, like, like in the past, it's like, fuck, I don't want to fight back. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, they're doing pretty good. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. And you're doing very well, too, man. <laughs> One I find that really, really sad, the situation. I just felt, yeah. I just felt sick. I was just trying to accomplish. We're all, here to, we're all here to work and we're all here to get along. So that's the first audio clip out of several that I have with uh, um, many people working at uh, VRL. I'm um, going to play you another one. I have witnesses for all of the audio clips um, that I'm presenting in this presentation that can attest that the people that I'm saying who they are are who I'm saying they are. So if I say uh, an individual is Dave Desanya, I have a witness that can attest that that is his voice. If I say, hey, uh, you're going to hear certain foreman voices in some of these audio clips or managers, I have witnesses that can attest that they are who I am saying they are. I'm now going to play you a clip from Mr. Dave Desanya from also Saturday, April the 14th, 2018. <laughs> But just to be public for the say to it, like, and then we use the room and stuff. How long has he been, like, bullying you? You know what I've been bullying? Well, I don't know. How long has he been, he's been since bullying Since day one. Since he became a local chair, or? It's only been a local chair, like, when I was here. But, like, has he, so how did he start bullying people then? It's always been like that. Like, he's, like, always giving a word to someone else, and then he goes to the camera, or yeah. It's always been like that. And like that time where like, for instance, like with the recent job bit, he was bullying you then as well? To pick a different shift? He was just telling me, oh, you know, you're crazy and stuff like that. If you don't take that shift, I'm not talking to you anymore. I'm like, and he said he wouldn't talk to you no more. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck that. And I said, you know, I was like scared because what is he doing? It's like, I don't even know what you're doing. Yeah. So I was trying to have to put it in. Yeah, so you've seen him bully like other people around here at the workplace. Like London. Okay. What did he do to Muhammad? Like he was like in training, like with us as a like an alley. Yeah. And it's like he wouldn't, it wouldn't really give him a chance to become an alley. It's like it's almost like he wanted him to not be an LA and just like look him for help. That's what I like to think. Yeah. But, and like, have you seen him directly harass and bully people here? Like, with your own eyes? Like, you know, like, so, Muhammad, have you seen him harass Muhammad directly with your own eyes? No, I mean, I was training him, right? When we're both together, and one was kind of like, like, like Johnny, right? It was just like, following us around. Yeah. But we wouldn't really be nice at all. It was just like, I'm thinking, oh, okay, you know, it's never going to be a good LD. Yeah. Look at this and look at that. Um, so it's always almost decided it's never going to be another. And and so like with the recent job bits, like you wanted the Monday Tuesday off before. I thought about it, but I gave up on it. But you gave up on it because you were being bullied by Herc. I'm not sure. Like, I gave up. You know, like it's not the end of the world. Like, okay, like if you want to kind of talk to me more, it's kind of like a big deal. Or yeah, I just like run out of Oh, for this other. Yeah, because you didn't want to have him harass you further at work. Oh, it's like to create any like problems, right? Yeah, I think so. Like, it's just, just, just the way like it's going on. It's like, like, you know, like, yeah. So, do you feel like he's abused his power as a local chair? Like, I think you know, like you know, the other know, like two days in a row, like Monday, Tuesday. Like stuff like that. It's kind of like you wonder why, like, someone, if it wasn't like with the seniority and the me and the rep, wouldn't be able to do that, stuff like that, right? Okay. Yeah. I remember, like, when I was at Jacob Janitor, like, also, why do you want to do it? 
Because I'm a janitor. And so he wouldn't allow you to do any of that? I would to talk to him and I'm like, fuck. Really? Yeah. Okay. So. It's like, okay, you're by your, your left ear on your braces. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of sad, Dave, that like you've had to like put up with a lot of that kind of stuff here. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you're smart and you're just like, okay, I don't want to fight him back, you know, we like to move over. It's like, fuck, I'm doing it. <laughs> A lot of people, like, they will just give up, like, you know, like, oh, whatever. Did it's you see other no Did you see other people give up around here? But I think, like, all of us will kind of give up in the past, you know, like, sit it on that river, like, or yeah. just the top of the road, like, so we deal with that issue, is, like, it's because, for instance, you come after me and it's your shot, two o'clock, you come in, and you see the cabins, not being clean, you know, the switching has been botched, you know? So, so the I, switching, switching has been botched? I mean, like, you know, like, uh, the moves have been like, oh, okay, you could have done this, you could have done that. He knew, but he didn't do it, he didn't tell the problem or nothing, just kind of let it go. Yeah. So he's got an easy thing, and yeah, I'm joking, I have so much to do, it's like, fuck. That's so what he was for me in common years, when I used to vacation and leave. So he was leaving the work for other guys yeah. to do? Yeah. Okay. And it's really bad. And, and, and soon Dan wrote letters in regards to this? In the past, I, I didn't talk about it many times. Um, the farmers want to, they want to get away with it. And why do you think he gets away with it? Because he's a union rep. Because he's a union rep? I think so. Okay. Yeah. And have you ever put this in like writing or like complaint to the foreman? Not in writing. I've talked to the foreman many times. Okay. Like, just in person, I guess, to see what they're thinking. Oh, yeah, it's that bad. bad. We always say stuff is very to change. And it's got to change, but then nothing changes. But then nothing changes. No. Okay. okay. And so you feel like basically like that if you don't do what he says, that you're going to get in some kind of trouble. Like if you. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you don't do it because it's like, man, it's easier for workers to do what you have to So you got to do what you what you got to do, it's like if you don't do that. Yeah. And in trouble, like look at you right now, fuck with that leather. How okay. much energy I have to spend to fight that, you know? Yeah, so you feel like I'm being harassed now? I uh, wouldn't be in your, I wouldn't like to be in your shoes. Yeah. Shit, yeah. because that's the thing when I found him, like, to say, hey, what's going on with the leather and all that stuff? With my letter? Yeah, it's like, oh, there's no way out for him. So I'm like, no, this is like, this is not my base. Yeah, he said there's no way out for yeah. me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's almost yeah, the sign of your feet. It's like, I don't know, I've never done that to someone like that, you know, to just go on the skis and try to, you know, play. Like, you try to put you in trouble like this. Yeah. No, it's like, you know, I mean, thanks for letting me record all this and, like, you know. I've done a lot of that because, you know, like, it's been about five years and that's what all those guys are writing and I was like, I can't refer and sit there. But no, the only thing is really stupid to show that to a duck. And it's like, why are these guys not getting in like, trouble? Like, you see, you don't mean, you mean, that you used to be a racist. Yeah. And, like, you know, like those guys are like complaining for so many years. That it's not like it's not equal. That's what I'm talking about. Like the workload, like on day shift, it's like super easy. Come in and joke like it's like a nightmare, right? You switch for like six hours in a row. But right. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I've worked the afternoons. So in your mind you feel like he comes in and doesn't do his fair share and the treatment of paper. And that basically he can get away with it here because he's because he's the union rep. Huh. Well, I don't think that's right. Well, it's never been really good. Yeah. It's like, yeah, and also, you know, I see you like struggling with it. It's like, oh, fuck, that's not. Yeah. That's okay. Well, hopefully, uh, you know, I just. Well, I mean, you said you have like all those letters and you have like people like to support you among this, you should be okay. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, thanks for sharing all this, Dave. Like, you, know, you know what I mean? I hope, like, we all have a positive workplace to come yeah. to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's like, just take one person, you know? Like, well, 
uh, one foreman or one employee, and everything is run. It doesn't take much. Yeah. Do you think that, like, do you think if Herc wasn't a union chair, then it would change? But then, yeah, you know, we all thought maybe he's going to retire. Yeah. But he did. He's still sticking around. And now he's like writing letters on like you're being a racist and still sick. What the hell? Yeah. You know, if you want to start doing stuff like that, why just want to retire and go, you know, have a nice, peaceful life instead of like creating tensions? Yeah. Creating problems for other people at work. Yeah, it's like, and you know, we got to deal with this. It's not even here. Yeah, for all. It's like, wow, what do we do? You're, you're being investigated and it's not even here. Yeah. Hmm. I'm just trying to check out how so like, if it's full or not. Okay. It's been one week, it's full. Yeah. It's really disgusting, though. No, it's not. It's not coming off of there. Yeah, I'm going to go get some work done, too. But uh, thanks for sharing. And uh, you know, Dave, like, I'm sorry that you've had to go through this here at uh, Be Real. Yeah, that's so weird, man. It's just like nuts. Yeah. That's but I thought it was seniority, and then I realized, oh, cool. It's also because it's a little bit red. Yeah. Huh. Well, as I work with other senior people, like Sid and Adam, they all did, and they all completely different. They all worked hard. Yeah, they all do our share. Oh. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Dave. Yeah, well, thank you, man. How are you, man? Yeah. There you have it. That's a conversation with Dave Desanya and myself, and you can hear him like mention Mohammed and how his fate of being a locomotive attendant got shifted sideways. And these kind of things are not fair. It's not fair for someone to be able to just create a letter and 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 ruin a person's reputation. You, you got to think about this. These you're messing with people's lives here, and. It seems to me, in my humble opinion, that some of these people, they don't care. They're willing to do whatever it takes to try and ruin somebody's reputation and career. And I just want to expose this and bring it to light and clear my name.